Welcome back, fellow shop rats. Today, I want to talk about the production of the full-length feature that y'all just watched on Saturday. Let's get into it. I'm Mike. This is My Cars Shop. Up until this point in my life, I have only ever produced videos that are up to an hour, give or take, long, I'm doing multicam uh, concert videos for the band, and uh, we've got at least one of those still available on DVD. And so it's nothing new to me to do extended length episodes and videos and things like that, and I certainly have done episodes on the channel that have been 45 and 50 minutes long. But doing a two-hour movie was quite a different undertaking, and I was thinking about it the other day. I was talking to Becky, and I said, you know, I've done hundreds, literally hundreds of 30-minute videos, 40-minute videos. But doing a two-hour movie was a much different experience than doing four 30-minute videos. And there's a number of reasons why, I suppose. For one thing, just the sheer volume of material that you're trying to edit is almost overwhelming. Working with archival footage that was recorded in a completely different way than the more recent footage. So basically the first 15 minutes of the movie was recorded much differently than the next hour and 45 minutes of footage. So that created some interesting challenges as well as changing uh, the way I do audio um, in that process as well made things interesting. And, and this equipment that I'm using, these microphones are phenomenal. They're good noise canceling mics. They cut out a lot of background noise, but in the process of that filtering, sometimes the audio levels can get a little bit wonky. And uh, I, I went above and beyond. I don't normally use my high-end Adobe software for doing episodes on the channel because it's very intensive software and I just use iMovie which is very simple to use but <clears throat> I really felt for the production of the movie I needed to get this into the Adobe Premiere um, where I could really look at the audio wave files and determine uh, you know how things were I actually pulled the audio file out of the movie once the movie was done and put it over into my um, DAW which is my uh, desktop audio workstation. Um, if you don't know that, I have a sound studio that I do all of the recording and mixing and so forth for the band. And I brought that over there and did some EQ work and leveling and compressing and things to try to get those sound levels to be somewhat reasonable. Um, I spent days working on that and I wasn't really totally satisfied uh, with the final audio product, but I felt like there was nothing super glaring in the movie now my approach to audio basically is you should be able to put the video going and not watch it but just have it going and the audio um, shouldn't call attention to itself so you're doing something else maybe i'm working on my phone or working on a computer or whatever and the movie's going and i'm not really listening to it or the video is going and i'm not really listening to it and if anything draws my attention away from what I'm doing, I know there's a problem in the audio. And I still get some flack sometimes for audio levels not being what people want them to be. Well, you know what? I go to movies and uh, concerts and listen to music and stuff like that. And, you know, the audio levels on a lot of that stuff aren't what I would prefer either. But I do put a lot of work and effort into um, most videos, not all, but most videos, I really try to put a lot of work and effort into getting a good audio quality. My philosophy about it, and I don't always, you know, I don't always achieve it, but my goal always is um, that audio shouldn't call attention to itself. You shouldn't have to watch the movie or a video and sit there with your volume control turning it up and down because um, some things are too quiet and some things are too loud. I know I'm not always completely successful at that, but realistically, I I don't have a lot of time. You know, I do a ton of work in the shop. I do a ton of filming. I spend a ton of time editing. And people say, you know, well, you could cut back and do less videos per week and blah, blah. We've had that discussion on other videos, but I will say um, that's not an option for me because I wouldn't get the work accomplished that I want to accomplish here in the shop. And the channel keeps me motivated to work on the cars and the cars keep me motivated to work on the channel. If I went to one or two episodes a week, 
I wouldn't get nearly as much accomplished here and I'd be 90 and I still wouldn't have finished the stitches challenger. And that's not an option for me. That's kind of a big bunny trail from the point of this, which was just following up in my thoughts about producing the movie. Uh, it's the very first one I've ever done. If I was to start doing another one today, I would do a lot of things differently. But one thing I've learned, I've, I've, I've produced a lot of music. I've done tons of writing professionally. Um, Oh, the amount of content that I've created in my 57 years of life is pretty significant. Um, and there's one thing that I've learned in all of that is if you wait for it to be perfect, you're going to get nothing accomplished. Um, 20 years ago when I was writing a book, I was talking with another fellow who was an author, who was a friend of mine, and he said one thing he learned after having written six or eight books was, there's always another one coming. Don't go back and continually try to fix the first one. Get it out there. Get people's hands. Most people are pretty understanding and forgiving if there's a typo or maybe something isn't perfect grammar or whatever. Because the whole point is you're conveying a thought. You're not there to satisfy the grammar police, right? Um, and I feel the same way about turning out content. That's not an excuse to turn out crappy content. But by the same token, there's always another video coming. So um, always something to learn, always something to learn. And that's exactly what I've done with this movie. When it was all done, I looked at it and I said, ooh, I could have done this, 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 and this differently. Now, I did go back and fix some things, but I didn't fix everything that I observed in it. Um, I feel like most people are pretty understanding, most people are pretty forgiving, and quite frankly, the things that I observe about it are more technical issues that the average person probably wouldn't observe anyway. My whole goal is to get you caught up in the story, and I feel like that starts to happen pretty quickly in this once we get beyond the introductory part of the movie. And I really tried to convey a storyline. I mean, let's face it. It's really just a feature length episode, will it run? Um, but I still tried to keep it from the perspective of this is a cinematic length, um, as high quality as possible, um, and just really tried to keep that in mind of a story that's flowing that will keep you captivated without getting bogged down in the details. And that's kind of the irony of doing a movie versus doing my normal episodes where in the episodes, I share the details ad nauseum. In the movie, I really skipped over a lot because I didn't want to get bogged down in the details and lose a viewer interest so they wouldn't sit and watch the movie from beginning to end. I didn't get real super clever with cinematic effect and all kinds of other things. I kept it pretty meat and potatoes because I wanted the story itself to be the point. So just like I talked about with audio, um, I wanted it to have a flow, and I didn't really want uh, clever video stuff to distract from the telling of the story unless I was trying to make a point or something funny. Um, so just like in writing, uh, something I learned from Patrick McManus many, many years ago uh, in reading a book that he put out on writing is that writing that calls attention to itself and draws you out of the story is bad writing no matter how clever it is. So for example... Uh, some kind of an example like what he gave is, uh, you know, the sunrise coming up in the morning and splashing across the meadow uh, as the birds chirp and blah, blah, blah. That's very evocative and creative writing. Um, but if this whole point of the story is about the deer on the other side of that meadow um, and all of a sudden you're thinking about sunlight splashing and flowers and birds, you're no longer focused on the deer. So a different way to word that could possibly be that uh, across the misty meadows, the deer stood in front of the pine tree uh, rather than this splashy sunlight flowers birds thing. Because, well, again, it's clever writing. It's not necessarily in line with the story. And all of a sudden you're not thinking about the whole point of this is a deer hunting story, for example. So um, I, I've really tried to apply that to my own writing, to my music, to... Um, 
to the videos here and to this movie. I really apply that to the music because I, uh, as a guitar player and as a lead singer, there's a time to show off and definitely as a front man of a band. But you want to be very, very careful about, you don't want to do a solo that's so blazing that people walk away talking about the guitar player and not the entire band. And that's important because it's a team effort. It's about a product that the band is putting out, right? So it's different if it's like a, you know, a single artist who has a backup band that's a bunch of no names. Uh, that's not the case with our band at all. We're a, we're a team, we're a unit, and the point is the band, not the individual members of the band. So it's the same thing in doing a movie uh, like we did here or even doing the episodes uh, on the channel is we don't want to draw attention to some little element of this thing and distract from the bigger picture of what does it take to get a car that's been parked in a swamp for 40 years and get it running and driving. I think one of the worst things that can happen to us in any kind of editorial process is falling in love with some specific thing and making it our pet and not wanting to get rid of it. Um, you know, we need to be open to, no matter what it is, stuff needs to hit the cutting room floor if it's distracting from the story. Now, the problem I have as a one-man show in this case is I don't have somebody else to bounce things off of. I don't have a different camera person. I don't have somebody else doing editing. I don't have somebody doing editorial review. And so I do miss things, obviously, because I'm like the frog in a pot, especially with the sheer volume of content that we turn out every week. The filming process uh, of the last hour and 45 minutes of that video was about eight weeks between filming and editing. And uh, that's all I did. I didn't do any other episodes in all of that. I didn't do any other work. I did pull one segment out uh, before the movie came out where there's a section on rebuilding the oil pump for the Slant 6. And at the time that, wasn't, that was released, I didn't let on that that was for the Golden Mullet. But um, for the most part, I really wasn't turning out much other content. And so that became its own stress and pressure of getting falling behind on the channel. I usually like about a six-week margin, which means I like 24-plus episodes ahead on the channel and um 24 18 what is that three times six three times six weeks is yeah 18 to 20 22 24 episodes there's maths and stuff i was falling way behind on that and it was creating a tremendous amount of stress for me but i knew i wanted to do the best job i could i probably went through that movie and remember it's a two-hour chunk um, of my time, I probably edited it, uh, reviewed it, went back and edited it, reviewed it, went back and edited it six, eight, ten times um, before I was comfortable with it. And uh, then after uploading it to YouTube, I'm putting it in the queue to be released on the 30th, which was just this past Saturday. Um, I really, I went back and watched it again to make sure that nothing was terrible and yeah every time i watch it i go "Ooh, that's a little that's a little nit i could pick that's a little nit i could pick so definitely i'm going to do another one on some other thing to be determined at some point um, but it was a huge learning curve and uh, quite surprising how much more work it was than doing just four regular episodes now i know y'all aren't here to you know hear um you know woes of tales of woe and all the behind the scenes crap about making videos and movies and all that stuff but i mean let's face it this is a video movie platform that you're watching this on and i don't very often talk about um, channel growth or video production I mean, this may be the first time i ever actually have talked about video production at all i, I don't know we've done at this point 540 episodes or something like that in our four seasons so i don't always remember everything i've put out but um, to the best of my knowledge, I haven't. And uh, I just thought it was interesting as a follow-up. Um, you know, the Tuesday before the movie came out, we did the, the newscast, which was a ton of fun. I had so much fun making that newscast um, 
Tuesday episode prior to uh, the movie on Saturday. And I thought, well, let's just, you know, put a bookend on both ends with the newscast and then this follow-up on what it was like doing that movie. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Um, it was a ton of fun to, to do that movie. It was a ton of fun to put that production together. It actually was a lot of fun to just... Uh, do the work on the car itself and see how far I could push the envelope before we finally hit that, that wall that we couldn't go any further with. So uh, if you haven't seen the movie, I would encourage you to watch it. Um, yeah, tooting my own horn, I suppose, but I really enjoyed it. And I guess at the end of the day, if you're putting out content and doing things that you're not enjoying, then why are you doing it at all? All right, that's going to do it. I appreciate you being here. Here's what I want from you. I don't really need to hear criticism and stuff about the movie. I'm sure there's plenty of that over there in those comments. Here's what I want to hear from you. What other kinds of movies like that would you like me to put together here on my car shop? My wheels are spinning already with all kinds of ideas, but I thought, you know, let's hear from you guys. What are the movies like that one? doesn't have to be a will it run, but what would you like to see in a two hour long form episode? All right, that'll do it. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And one more thing, because it's my car shop and it's all very important. But don't forget. Rawr.